How would you like to be able to qualify and race at Lernerville as quick as the pros do? If that sounds good, then I want you to stick around because in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And I'm going to even show you the setups to use to get the most out of your car at this track. All of that and more right after this. What's up everybody, Thomas Brandon here, and welcome to another School of Sim Racing video. Now, in this video, I'm going to be walking you through Lernerville. We are just getting started in Season 3 here in I Racing, and the first track up for the 360s is Lernerville. Now, one of the really difficult things about Lernerville is the fact that there isn't a wall. Now, typically with the track that has a wall, you wouldn't be bouncing off of it, but that wall, for some reason, plays a really big psychological part when it comes to running the high line. And this leads a lot of people to just sailing off the track and completely blowing their chances at having a good run. Now, along with not having a wall, another thing about Leonardville that makes it pretty difficult is the fact that you have two different types of turns. Turn one and two is really, really tight, where three and four is big, wide, sweeping, and it's got a dip, this bump in the middle that can cause the car to really get upset and push right to the wall if you don't run it correct. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I run this track and the setups that I use, and we're going to cover qualifying, heat races, and the features. So with all that being said, let's dive right in. Now, really quick, I've only come out and I've turned just one lap here so far with this qualifying setup. And the lap that I turned was a 13.2. Now, if you look at the track, we've got a 10% uh, track and our temperatures are pretty cool right now. And the lap that I did definitely was not perfect. It could have been better. And so we could probably get down to about 13.1. Now, understand if you can get into the low 13s with the 360s at Lernerville, you're going to be starting up front in the vast majority of the races you're in. Now, what is this setup? Well, let's actually bring it up. So this setup, and I'll have this for you guys to actually download. I'm going to have these. There's a link down in the description below so you can download these setups. All right, I'm going to give them to you for free. Okay, so make sure you use them well. Go out and win with them. All right, don't just play around with them, go out and win some races with them. But anyways, so the setup that I have is actually going to be different than some of the setups that I used last season, particularly at this track. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is, is we're running more stagger this time. Um, I've been running a lot more stagger with these cars than I was in the previous season, and I was already running a lot of stagger compared to other people. So we're at maxed out. We're at 14 inches of stagger. Now, and when we go to the chassis side here, this is where you're going to really see a lot of the changes. So first of all, once again, we've got the wing flat and we've got it all the way forward. That's really the main thing with these cars that's going to slow you down the most is the wing. Now our front end with the bars, we've got a different bar combination. We have a 10 and a quarter in the right front and we have a thousand in the left front. Now I still have both of them jacked all the way up but we do have those different bars. Now in the rear, we've got a 10 and a quarter in the right rear and a thousand in the left rear. This is gonna give us that tilt in the car and make it to where it's really nice and smooth going through the corners if we can hit our line correctly. Now, along with that, we're running some different ride heights now, too. So it used to be that I would run the car a little bit higher with the 360s and even the 410s, and now I don't do that. So with the 360s, we actually start off at around 14.3 to 14.4 in the right rear, and 12.7 to 12.6 in the left rear. And as the night progresses, we're gonna actually drop the car down as the track slicks off instead of raising it up. It used to be the other way around. So we've got 14.39 in the right rear with 12.6 in the left rear, and you can see we've got negative one and a half turns and negative 1.75. Our shocks are 4.7 on the left rear, and then we've got a straight 5 on the right with 18 inches of wheel spacing on the right rear, 13.75 on the left rear, and we've got just 2 gallons of gas, um, or should I say fuel, and we've got a 5.74 rear end ratio, okay? So that's our setup. Now, how do we run this track? How do we get those fast times? Well, we do this 
by running the top and running it wide open. Now, like I said, this track can be tricky, and the main reason for it being tricky is the fact that you've got these really this really tight turn in one and two and then in three and four you got this big bump and if you don't hit that line correctly in three and four you're going to shoot straight to the wall coming out of turn four all right so let me show you how we do this now when you've got two gallons of gas you want to kind of wait until the back stretch before you get into the throttle we want to make sure that we save our fuel we don't want to run out of gas during qualifying all right let's let her rip shall we so we're going to wait we're going to get into that corner get right there on the top and run it around try to keep it as straight as possible three and four we're going to go up above that bump right on the edge there and keep it nice and straight all right so if we go back and we actually look at that lap that we just turned you can see we did a 13 one three eight that was our fast time um really really fast really really good lap now let's actually look at this lap here and let's look at it from a little bit of a different angle and i want you to watch where i put this car because it's really really important okay so we get the green and you can see here that we are right up on the cushion. The higher that you the higher you can get this car, the better. And you can see we actually start to wash out over the top. I mean, I was really up on the edge there. Now, as we come out of the corner, we're basically just trying to keep it straight and wide open. We want to be wide open on these qualifying runs so we can get a nice good angle and not go off the back stretch. That's another really important part. Now, as we get into three and four, it's the same thing. We're going to get the car set. And what we want to do is, is we want to pay attention to where we've got the car right now. We want to set ourselves up at the correct angle in terms of this bump coming up. If you don't have it at the right angle, what will happen is, is when you hit that bump in the middle, the car is going to get unsettled. And so as you can see, we're going to get the car in. And then we basically just follow the arc all the way around. The key to three and four is really the entry. It's getting the car entered, getting it in and set, and then driving it through the rest of the way. Trying not to use that much wheel. You want to be straightening out. As you can see, my wheels are already started to point to the right. We want to be straightening the car out. And then right there, we start to get straight. Let that banking do the work. And that is how you run a qualifying lap here at Lernerville. Okay. Now, what do we do for the heat race? Well, let's actually head over to the garage and we'll take a look. Now, when it comes to my setups, okay, very rarely do I have, you know, a qualifying setup, heat race setup, and a feature setup, and I just click on those, load them up, and go. I typically will start with my base, or in this case, qualifying setup, and then I adjust it myself throughout the night. The reason that I do this is because a lot of times the track is going to be different race to race. So you might start off with the clean track in practice. You might start off with a track that has slight usage in practice. Now, that 5% difference might not sound like a lot, but when it comes to the track state, it really is, particularly when we start getting into the heat races and the feature. A 40% track at the start of the feature is a big difference than a 50% track. So, for me, it's better to just adjust as the night goes. Now, that's me, and I'm very comfortable with doing adjustments. I know these things inside and out. I've been doing this in, I mean, I did it in real life for years. And then I've done I've done more testing and more adjusting in iRacing in the last three months than most people have probably done in 10 years. So um, I'm really comfortable with it. So with that, what adjustments can we make? Well, the first one that we're going to make is, is we're going to take a little bit of stagger out. Now, the reason that we're going to take some stagger out is because when you're running wide open, the you know throttle being down, keeping the car straight, that's not that hard to do. But 
when you start rolling out of the throttle, which can definitely happen when you have cars around you, that stagger is going to make the car want to rotate even more. And this is where people get out of shape. And so I'm going to take a half an inch of stagger out just because we're going to have some cars around us. And I don't want that car, if I have to let out the gas, to snap around on me. Okay. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is, is we're going to obviously put our fuel in right? Got to have enough fuel for the heat race. Now, six gallons should be enough for an eight lap race here at Lernerville. Okay. So we're going to go with six gallons. Then we need to reset our ride height. And so what we're going to do is, is I'm going to just put in a half a turn in the left rear, a half a turn in the right rear. And that right there is perfect. My car is now ready for the heat race. I don't need to change anything else. There's nothing else that I need to change. The difference in the track from qualifying to the heat race is not going to be that much. And even if it is for me, I would rather have a car that's a little bit free than a car that's too tight, especially with these three sixties. Now, the reason that is, is because I can move my wing back a notch and tighten the car up and still run up front. Okay. That's, it's not a, it's not that big a deal for me. And the main thing with the heat races is you're just trying to get to the feature. That's the goal. You don't need to win the heat race. You don't, it, it, who cares? Just get to the feature. That's the goal. And so I would rather, if I go out and set a lap, like I just did a 13 one, I would rather do just a couple of minor tweaks, call it good and move on as opposed to doing all these changes, trying to nail it perfectly. Cause I know that I've got a good setup with this. So with that, let's actually head out and we'll run a few laps here, trying to simulate the heat race. All right. Now, when it comes to the heat race, the top is still going to be the fast way around. Um, you can run the bottom, but the bottom is for me is really to pass. So I'm going to show you how you can actually do both. All right. So first of all, let's do some laps around the top here. See right there, I actually got a little high, I had to get out of the throttle. And you're gonna be right on that edge. Now one thing that you gotta be careful here at Lernerville is, is when you're running the top, there's a bump in the middle of three and four. If you don't hit it at the right angle, it's gonna really upset the car. And so you wanna try to go above it or below it. If you just try to go through the middle, hear that that bump that's that bump so the car can get unsettled really really easily now when it comes to running the bottom the line that you're going to use is almost like a slider line in turns one and two so let me show you what i'm talking about here so you're going to come down and you're going to slide up all right that's how you're going to run the bottom that's why i said it's mostly for passing now in three and four you're going to actually kind of diamond it off when the track is fresh like this. We're almost out of fuel, but it looks like we'll make it to the end. So there we do our slider line. Here we're going to get the car rotated and then drive it out straight. All right, one more time. And you can also run the middle and still do pretty well when the track is fresh like this. Now, if you really want to get down low, Do it like that, but be careful. We're on fuel, we should be able to make it to the end. If you go too low, you'll catch that bump right there in three and four, and that will upset the front of the car where it'll kind of wash it out. Okay, so that is how you can run the heat race. Now, the real question is. And you can see on our laps here, 13.2, 13.5, 13.4, 13.4, 13.4, and then 13.1. I let off the gas there when we hit that bump. So um, the real question becomes, how do we run in the main, right? Because that's really the trick. It's one thing to qualify fast. It's another thing to even be fast in the heat race. What really separates those who are, you know, winning the races, obviously, is being able to drive in the feature on the slick track. And that's what we're going to cover next. So let's head over to the slick track. All right. So now it's time for the feature. And this is really what separates, um, right, the, you know, the men from the boys, right? This is where the cream rises to the top. And 
at Lernerville in an official race, if you can run high 13s, low 14s consistently, you're going to be running up front. Okay. I mean, that that's really, those are really good lap times. When I go back and I look at lap times from the top splits right now, uh, and I'm talking, you know, uh, strength of field, that's like 2,800, 3,000, right? I mean, you have legitimate pros that are in these races, the the Simmelmans and the Heilmans, the Edens of the world, right? Like the, the top, the top drivers, they're doing, you know, 13 eights, 13 nines in the features. They're qualifying at, you know, 13 one, 13 two, 13 three. Now in qualifying, we were right there with them. Now, obviously, temperature and track setting stuff like that. I mean, there's, there's variables that you just can't account for. Same thing with the feature, uh, when you're testing here at a 50% track, what I will tell you is, is when you are testing at a 50% track, which is what we've got right now, if you can do high 13s to low 14s, right? Anywhere from like 14, two to 13, eight, if you can consistently run in that time frame, you're going to do good. Okay. You're going to do very good. Now, Let's take a look at the setup. So pretty much what I've done is, is I dropped another half inch of stagger. We'll be running 13 inches of stagger in the feature. Okay. That for a lot of other setups, that's a ton, but for us, we're good. Okay. So 13 set, uh, 13 inches in the right or 13 inches of stagger for the rear. Next, you're going to notice a couple of changes here. So first of all, We've moved the wing angle. We haven't moved the position. We've moved the angle. This is something that I've started doing. Instead of moving the wing back, what I've been doing is I've been adding angle to it. So when the track slicks off, I have discovered that 26 degrees, for example, on a track like this in this situation, all the way forward feels better than 24 degrees and having it moved back, you know, one or two notches. That feels better to me. For you, you might like something else, okay? And so what I'd recommend is, is that try this out. If you don't like it, if it doesn't feel good to you, then you can move the wing at 24, try to run it all the way forward. But if you want to stabilize the car, move it back to minus one, minus two. I always recommend at the start of a feature when you have a full tank of gas to have the wing back one or two notches just because it'll help stabilize the car. Okay? You you don't have to win the race on lap one. It's impossible. You can't win the race on lap one. So let's get through, you know, that. Let's survive the war of attrition and then we can, you know, battle it out the last 15, 20 laps for the victory as opposed to trying to win it turn one lap one because it's impossible you can't do it okay so even me even i will move the wing back one or two notches at the start of the race or i'll do this where i actually add some angle to it i've got some drivers in ssr phenomenal sprint car drivers okay like on the cusp of running with the pros and even they say this they're like dude just move the wing back one or two notches at the start of the race we do it like i mean they do it so don't be afraid to add a little bit of wing at the start of the race as the fuel burns off and the car tightens up because the fuel's burning off you can move the wing back forward okay or you'll find that hey the wing is actually in the perfect spot because the track is slicked off and now my car feels even better right like it, it's a balancing act so try those. Okay. I'm going to have it here at 26 and all the way forward. But like I said, if you don't like that, you can try it at 24 and then maybe move it back a notch or two. See what works best for you. Now here in the front, we're actually going to leave the front alone. It's dialed in. It feels good here at this track. And in the rear, we've got some changes. So first of all, we've dropped the bar in the right rear. We've dropped it all the way down to a 975. We're going to be running reverse split. We've got some soft bars in this thing. What I noticed with my other setups when I was actually going to stiffer bars in the car for the feature, and if you remember, those of you who've seen those videos before, um, I talked about how it made no sense, right? But I racing liked stiff bars. Well, what I was noticing was is my car would be really fast, and I won a lot of races with those setups, and so did a lot of other drivers. But I was noticing in certain situations, the, the car was, the setup was falling off. 
the car was falling off a lot at the end of races. And it, it really sent me down this rabbit hole where I started doing all kinds of tests and all kinds of, you know, things. And I discovered quite a few different things. And one of them is that running softer bars in the back can really work, especially when you do the different ride heights like I do now, and you also change up some of the shocks in the rear. Um, one of the reasons I was having problems with the softer bars before was I was running the same shock combination and same ride height, and it just didn't feel good. Now, with these new ride heights and different shock combinations that I run, the car feels much, much better. And so we're going to be running a thousand in the left rear and a 975 in the right rear. And then I've got just a, you know, minus 0.25 turns in the left rear and then plus 0.25 turns in the right rear. That gives me the right height that I want. And it gives me the cross weight that I want, which is about 47.8. That's another thing that I've been doing is I've been running very little cross weight. Lernerville is one of the few tracks I still run a lot of cross weight, but most other tracks, I hardly run any cross weight. And then We've got our wheel spacing at 14 in the left rear and 17 in the right rear with 18 gallons of fuel. And we've got our gear still the same at 574. Um, 18 gallons should give us about 35 laps. Remember, cautions don't count in 360s in the official races. So you want to have you want to have a little bit of a buffer. OK, and for me, I have found that usually, you know, three to five laps extra in the sprint cars is right about where I want to be. And so 18 gallons is what gives me that. Now, how do we run the, the track here? Well, first, understand that this track, okay, down the front stretch, you've got some really gnarly bumps. Turn one, you're going to notice how, see how the slick goes up and up and up and up. So you can really slide out and wash off there. And then in three and four, you're going to notice that the cushion, I mean, it's the, the groove is right up at the top, okay? And then it kind of gets bigger as we exit. What I've noticed at Lernerville is that it's much better, it's much quicker to actually slow down on entry, get yourself set so you can really get back into the gas from the center out that will improve your lap times. If you're trying to really drive it in deep and then, you know, set the car and stuff like that, for me, that actually slows me down. So it's actually better, those, uh, you know, I was turning 13.7s, 13.8s, and I was rolling out of the throttle on entry and then, you know, get back into it from the middle out. Okay, so that's, you can still roll out of the gas and be very, very fast. You don't have to be wide open around the top. You can, if you can do it, do it but throttle control does play a role it really does okay so let's actually run a few laps here and let me show you what i'm talking about all right so we've got all that fuel in the back now we got to make sure that we're being careful you can see right there i'm right up on the lip right there i got a little too high See how I kind of just rolled out and then got back in? Roll out, get back in. The key is getting the car set. Once you got it set, then you can get back into the gas. But we want to make sure that we're not, not driving her off the track. And now we got that right rear in that fresh dirt. Hitting your line is much more important than trying to be wide open, especially if you're gonna fly off the track. Okay, so you can see this is all we're gonna do here, running the top, nice and smooth. Now, when it comes to running the bottom, You're going to just roll out of the throttle and then get back in it right at the center, just like that. Here, it's really like a slider line where you're going to slide up. So you want to make sure that you don't have any cars outside of you because you're going to slide up into them. 
And if you can do this without using any brake, that's good, because the brake's gonna really kill your momentum. But you can see we're just rolling out of the gas, getting it rotated, and then get back into the throttle from the middle out. And that's basically how you'll pass, too. If you catch someone on the top and you gotta pass them, pull the slide job on them. Um, I, for me, doing a slider in one and two, I have found to actually be better than three and four. That's for me, though. For you, it could be completely different. Another thing that you can do is, is you can also undercut them coming out of the corner, where you kind of diamond it off cut underneath them and then get a run coming out of four. Um, you can do that because of the way that the slick slides up. Same thing in one and two. See where you actually got this fresh dirt that you can hit before the top there. So if you can undercut them, you might be able to get a run on them. Just know that you better get a good run because you got to beat them to the top going into the next corner or do an undercut so you can get a run, and then now you've got much more, much more space, much more leeway to throw a slider on them in the next turn. Okay. So let's take a quick look at the lap times. See what we did here. Obviously, that last lap is going to be smoking fast, and we were running 14s, low 14s there. Uh, you know, 14 six sixes or so on the on the bottom um which is about right you know it's usually a few tenths slower uh when you get to the bottom up here you can see my faster laps when i was doing some testing we had 13 eights 13 sevens the track is slowed down quite a bit um i've been in this session for almost 30 minutes so you know i i put quite a few laps on it already but even if you can run consistently 14 ones around the top and then, you know, get to where you can throw a slider on somebody, you're you're going to have some good results. You really are. All right. The main thing is, is just being smooth and consistent, making sure you're staying on the track. All right. It can be really difficult to do with this when, with that cushion right there on the top like that. But just staying on the track, being smooth and consistent, lap after lap. And if you do that, particularly in these 360s, you're going to have some good results. OK, so. That's going to do it. Now, really quick, do me a favor. Before you go, if you like this, hit that like button. And also, make sure that you subscribe and then hit that little notification bell so you get notified when I put out any more content. Because, look, we've got a ton of stuff coming. i got a ton of stuff that's going to be coming out here over the next just few weeks. But this week alone, I'm going to be doing a video like this for the 410s the non-wing 360s, the late models, a, a bunch of stuff, even the midgets. And the reason for that is, is because this week, it's free. Now, after this week, I'm going to be charging money for it on the website, and I'll get more info about, about that to you um, later. But the main reason is, is right now, I'm spending probably 12 to 15 hours a day on iRacing. Uh, I might not be actually on the sim racing, but in terms of working with people, coaching, creating content, you know, building websites, running the leagues, you know, all this stuff like this. And because of that, um, you know, I, I, it's become a job. Now, for these, I'm going to be charging two dollars a month, so it's fifty cents a week. It's not, it's not going to be a lot of money. And you can pick and choose which ones you want. That way you don't have to pay for a bunch of stuff that you're not using. But I just wanted to let you know um, going forward. So that way, you you know, I don't want people to think that I'm trying to trick you or screw you or anything like that. And look, if you want to learn more about this stuff, you can still get all of my other setups for free. All of my trainings. You can come join our School of Sim Racing community in the private Facebook group on Discord. I mean, we've got our leagues, we all of that. I mean, there's still a wealth of knowledge that you can get for free that you don't have to pay for. You can save the $2, okay? So, I just wanted to let you know that, like I said, because that's what's going to be happening going forward, all right? But that'll do it, all right? Thank you very much for joining me. I hope this helps you. I hope you go out and kick butt with it this week. And if you do, let me know. Send me a, you know, a message, put it down in the comments below, let me know. I love, love hearing stories about you guys going out, and girls, going out 
and whipping people's backsides on the dirt tracks with this all right so until the next video as always thank you very much for joining me until next time good luck good races take care see you on the track and until then have a good one